Where can you find centuries-old churches, princely palaces, and amazing amphitheaters? In Bucharest, Romania. Welcome to Laura McKenzie's Traveler. Hi, I'm Laura McKenzie, and welcome to Romania, one of the most fascinating countries in Eastern Europe, less than 20 years out of communism. Now, you're saying Romania. I know it, but where is it again? Well, its borders are the Ukraine, Serbia, Bulgaria, and Hungary, and its capital is right here in Bucharest. There is one province that I know you know, Transylvania, home to Count Dracula, and we're going to go there, too. We'll see castles and palaces. It's going to be fantastic. So if you're ready, Romania, here we come. Romania has a romantic history filled with stories of kings and castles and religious conquests. It's also been the object of many wars, with princes and conquerors fighting to rule the country and its people. It's been inhabited through the centuries by different Eastern European tribes, including the Goths and the Huns. It's been ruled by the Romans, the Persians, the Hungarians, the Bulgarians, and most recently, the Communists. It's because of this turbulent and often oppressive history that Romania today has such a diverse culture, making it one of the most fascinating places to visit in Europe. <laughs> Romania's capital and largest city is Bucharest, a city that seems to have survived the time warp of communism and embraces its possibilities. It's a city of contrasts, and its history can be seen prominently in its architecture. During the Principality, beautiful ornate churches and Renaissance-style buildings were constructed and preserved, earning it the nickname Little Paris. But when communism took over and abolished the monarchy in 1947, large parts of the city's historical districts were destroyed in order to make way for huge concrete government buildings. These new monoliths were built to reflect the power of the Communist Party, and none were bigger than the Palace of the Parliament. This colossal structure is the second largest building in the world after the Pentagon. After the fall of the Communist Party, this palace of the people became the home of the new Romanian government. With communism gone, the country has capitalized on some of the remnants of that era. In the communist years, this estate was totally forbidden because it was the private home of Ceausescu, the communist leader. Now, outside, people were standing in line for food, but inside here, he had five-star accommodations, his own private lake, a swimming pool, air conditioning, and a private restaurant for he and his friends. It was so nice that today, it's a private club. Was it Ceausescu who said, let them eat cake? No, he just said, keep them working. Since the fall of communism, the city has taken great strides to rebuild itself and refurbish its more artistic past. This is the old town area of Bucharest in the process of being rebuilt and renovated. Some of the buildings are done and some of them aren't, but it's definitely authentic. I mean, look at these cobblestones. They're very uneven, some of them are missing. Now, what does that tell you about what kind of shoes to wear, huh? Now, this is a pedestrian zone. You're gonna be doing a lot of walking. This area of Bucharest is called the Lipscani area and contains the old princely court where the city got its start. In fact, one of the oldest buildings still standing is located nearby. Dating back to 1545 and adorned with frescoes and paintings, the old court church is truly a wonder to see. The church burned in the 1800s and one icon inside was left untouched. Now they say that if you come and pray to that icon, your wish will come true. Not far away is another of Bucharest's historic gems. This is the oldest inn in Bucharest, and on your way in, have a look down. These aren't cobblestones, that's wood. Mannix Inn was originally built to shelter traveling merchants. Today, it still serves that purpose, inviting travelers to take a load off and stay a while. An interior courtyard is surrounded by beautifully carved balconies and still has several rooms, a restaurant, and several bars. 
It also plays host to many fairs and festivals throughout the year. The rooms are very simple and very clean and the woodwork's everywhere. It's just amazing. Now, while you're here, try the typical Romanian liqueur called Suica de Pruna. It's a plum liqueur that's not too sweet, but it's 42% alcohol. And they say that you're supposed to have it before a meal and not after because it burns the grease. Well, at 42%, it's going to burn a lot more than, than grease. I'll give it that. Woo. As you travel around Bucharest, take a minute to notice all the beautiful churches located around the city. The majority of Romanians belong to the Roman Orthodox Church, and the head of the church is located right here in Bucharest. This stunning 17th century cathedral sits high on a hill overlooking southern Bucharest. Inside the church, the walls are lined with painted icons and stained glass windows, leading to an exquisite altar where the patron saint of Bucharest, Saint Dumitru, is entombed. You can actually join the line of worshippers who constantly climb the staircase in order to pay their respects. Outside in the gardens, magnificent old stone crosses lie in the shadows of the church's 15th century bell tower. So, with all these historical sites and buildings, you might be wondering what life was like in Romania a couple of hundred years ago. At the Museum of Romanian Peasants, you'll find a treasure trove of over 100,000 artifacts documenting the customs of rural life here. But if you want to get a feel for what peasant life was really like, definitely wander through the Village Museum, an outdoor museum. It was designed to mirror what rural life was really like here in Romania. In fact, it's designed to look like it's a real village. What's amazing is that these cottages and barns aren't replicas, they're real. They were brought in from the north of Romania piece by piece and reassembled. They were brought in from Transylvania, Moldovia, and the Danube Delta. Some of them are 200 years old. For example, that gate behind me, 1909, all hand carved. And when they brought them back here, they put them back together the original way, no nails. <laughs> With clusters of homes, barns, churches, and mills linked by winding paths, you'll really feel as if you've been transported back in time. Beautiful church, isn't it? Over 200 years old, again, made totally of wood. And speaking of wood, look at this. The fences are made out of plum trees. Braided, again, no nails. Romania is a bit of a mystery to us Westerners. It's been hidden for so long in communism, it's really exciting to discover what Romania really has to offer. Here's a tip. Romania is home to a third of the natural springs in Europe, and its bottled water is rated among the best in the world for purity and taste. Laura McKenzie's Traveler will be right back. Welcome back. For more information on Bucharest, visit us on the web at lauramackenzietv.com. After the fall of communism, Romania became a democratic republic. But the country also retained the king, who was in power before communism. King Michael's family once again resides in the Elizabeth Palace here in Bucharest. And while it's only open for invited guests, I arranged to see just how royalty lives by taking an invited tour of the royal home with Princess Margarita and Prince Radu. It's kind of spectacular in a way. It's the smallest palace in, in uh, Bucharest. Um, and it's got a combination of Romanian and Moresque styles, which are quite original. Built in 1937, the palace has a more modern feel than other Romanian castles. This is the dining room. It seats between 20 and 24 people, and I think what's impressive about it is that it's comfortable. It's not overly stuffy or formal. Now, King Michael still lives here, so the palace is not open to the public. This is really special to see this. And after King Michael passes away, the palace goes back to the government as a state building. From here, King Michael acts as an unofficial ambassador, helping to get Romania into NATO and the European Union. With intricately detailed fixtures and plush furnishings, the decor is definitely fit for a king. 
King Michael is unique in that when he was appointed to the throne, he was the youngest monarch in Europe. This is King Michael's private office. Now this is really special. Nobody ever gets to see this. And on his desk is something I thought you'd really like to see. The cover of Time Magazine when he became king at age six. And the caption reads, Bonnie King Michael. That's fantastic. Now it's the room above us that made history. That's the room where King Michael was forced at gunpoint by the communists to abdicate the throne. In 1947, when the Communist Party took over Romania, the king was removed from his throne and his family was exiled. After communism fell, and though he was denied several times, it wasn't until being invited to an Easter celebration several years later that the Romanian government finally allowed him to re-enter the country. It was the most extraordinary event. I mean, the, the streets were packed. I think over the three days he was here, it was over a million people came to the streets. It was just a total mob scene. And so, nearly 50 years after being exiled, the king's citizenship was reinstated, and he was once again allowed back into his beloved homeland. So that was very, very moving for him and for the country. And then he, he fought for national reconciliation all these years, and finally this is the result. There is more to Bucharest and Romania than beautiful architecture. Throughout its rich history, it's the people and their culture that have made this one of the most unique places in Europe. Romanians are the very romantic people, creative. They like to have ideals and to stand for their ideals. That makes them also very hospitable. They like to openly express their faith. So do Americans. And this kind of two important links, soul and faith, make a beautiful bridge between our two continents. Perhaps it's this creativity and soul of the people that's responsible for the many myths and folklore of the region. In fact, the Romanian province of Transylvania is only a short drive away, but its stories are legendary particularly the story of Dracula, inspired by Romania's legendary Prince Vlad Tepes. Today, the town of Brasov is where Vlad Tepes led raids on the Saxon merchants and where Dracula memorabilia is everywhere. Nearby, the medieval town of Braun is home to Dracula's castle and a magnet for vampire-seeking tourists. With a backdrop like Romania, it's easy to see where Bram Stoker got his inspiration for the scariest legend of all time. From the rugged wilderness of the Carpathians to the medieval towns and villages scattered throughout the countryside, you can't help but be inspired by the remarkably rustic regions of Romania. The point about Romania at this stage is it's very unspoiled. And many people, when they come here, they see their horses and carriages and uh, people going about their work, like in the 30s. And I hope this can be maintained but with proper infrastructure, but without spoiling that. I think this is one of the big attractions of this country. And then we have a rich cultural heritage. We've seen some beautiful houses, castles, monasteries. And it's this authentic Romania that I'm finding so fascinating. Here's a tip. Credit cards are widely accepted in hotels and restaurants in Bucharest, but in the smaller markets and villages, Romanians only deal in local cash currency or lei. Laura McKenzie's Traveler. We'll be right back. Welcome back. For more information on Bucharest, visit us on the web at lauramackenzietv.com. Though Bucharest has some amazing architecture and historic sites, it also has a few places to just kick back and relax. The people in Bucharest are very proud of their parks. In fact, this is where they come on the weekends. It's kind of like Central Park in New York or Hyde Park in London. There's a huge lake. You can take boat trips around, outdoor cafes. They do concerts. Look, they're setting up for a show right now. This is the place to be on the weekends. Harastrau is Bucharest's largest park and an amazing place to visit. This is where people come to socialize, get some exercise, or romanticize. On a beautiful day, this is where to find the locals enjoying their city. In addition to long, winding pathways leading through trees and gardens, there are also go-karts and rides for the kids. But my favorite is the boat ride, 
so relaxing. The lake is where the action is, and late afternoon, early evening is the time to take a stroll or a boat ride on the water. Now, it stays light until about 9.30 in the summertime, so you've got plenty of time to enjoy it. And if a ride on the big boat isn't your cup of tea, you can rent out smaller motorboats or even rowboats for a bit of peace and privacy on the water. If you think the architecture and scenery are amazing here in Romania, wait till you taste the food. Most of the city's restaurants and outdoor cafes feature traditional Eastern European cooking. La Mama is a very popular restaurant in Bucharest and, as the name suggests, serves traditional Romanian meals just like mom used to make. Go ahead, eat! One of Bucharest's finer restaurants is Garibaldi Ristorante, serving many traditional Eastern European dishes. And one of the most popular dishes is their famous hunter chops. This is Chef Ternasa, and he is going to be making a Romanian dish for us. He doesn't speak English, so I'll try and translate what he's doing. Go ahead. O să pregătesc o specialitate românească din... These are lamb chops. Yes. This garlic? Yes. Garlic, yeah. Hunter chops are a traditional Romanian dish and very simple to make. First, you prepare the pan with olive oil and throw in the chops with the garlic on top. Okay, turn them over immediately after about 10 seconds, okay? After the chops are turned, the chef adds the rest of the fresh vegetables and tops it off with pepper. Just a few minutes in the pan, ready to go on the plate. That looks great. Olive oil, garlic, and wine is that sauce. That's it. That looks beautiful. We have hunter chops. Now, no Romanian meal would be complete without wine. And Garibaldi has quite a foolproof way of selecting one you like. What a concept. Sample the wine before you buy. Seriously, here in the wine room, you can come and try any of the wines in the open bottles, or they'll open a new bottle for you off the rack, or a medium-priced one anyway. You find one you like, then they'll serve it to you at dinner, kind of like a test drive. Cheers. While sightseeing and eating are two great ways to experience any city, perhaps the best way to get a feel for the local culture is by shopping. Well, it is. But clothes aren't the only interesting things you'll find here. Well, the Romanians have apparently discovered the fountain of youth in a jar. It's called Gero Vital. It's a face cream invented by a doctor, Anna Aslan. Supposedly, when she died, she looked 20 years younger than her age. They say it was used by Elizabeth Taylor, John F. Kennedy, Pablo Picasso, and it's supposedly incredible. It looks like this. You get it in pharmacies here in Bucharest, and it's fantastic. You should see the women here. They're absolutely gorgeous. In fact, I got a day cream and a night cream, and I'm going back to buy six more jars. Here's a tip, Gero Vital is a great take-home gift for less than $10 a jar. Laura McKenzie's Traveler will be right back. Welcome back. For more information on Bucharest, visit us on the web at lauramackenzietv.com. Romania holds its heroes, poets, and artists in high regard. All over Bucharest, you'll find monuments dedicated to the people who've shaped and contributed to the country's culture. I could show you museums and monuments all day, but I think the most impressive building here is the Romanian Athenaeum. It was opened in 1888 as the city's main concert hall, and it's home to the George Inescu Philharmonic and Annual International Music Festival. The entrance is lined with medals of Romanian rulers and six massive columns. A statue of Mihai Emanescu, Romania's greatest poet, stands proudly in front to greet visitors as they enter. The ground floor is an ornate conference hall as large as the auditorium above, which seats over 600. Romania is a country full of surprises, and I think if I had to describe it, I'd say it's a place that's trying to catch up after a long sleep. Bucharest is fascinating, the countryside is beautiful, and the people are just so genuine. I really think it's a place you should see before it catches up too quickly. So, on the Laura McKenzie scale of 1 to 10, I'd give it a 9 for history, culture 8, friendliness 9, shopping 6, getting around 6, hotels and food 6 and rising. Would I go again? 
Definitely, I have to explore Transylvania. Pretty spectacular, isn't it? You know, back in the 1800s, to build this, a group of Romanians used to collect donations. They'd stand on the street corner and go, give a loo for the Athenaeum, give a loo for the Athenaeum. Well, who knew then that the coins that they collected would someday build one of the symbols of Bucharest lasting over 100 years? Just one of the little stories here in Romania. I hope you enjoyed seeing it with me and that you'll join me again next time from somewhere else around the world. I'm Laura McKenzie. Bye-bye.